name's uh, John Neild. Uh, I've been a season ticket holder since 1985. So I've been going over three decades now watching United. Obviously enjoy that experience now with uh, my young son Alex as well. So uh, yeah, we both love United, it's in our blood. Uh, but he first went to his game when he was three, 2010, his first game at Old Trafford. Uh, and he absolutely loved it and I've taken him ever since. And I introduced uh, football to Alex's life, but I can't teach his passion. Just absolutely loves it. Yeah, Alex just lives for United. He, he can't wait to watch, watch the next game, whether that's the under 18s, the 23s, the women or the first team. Uh, and he just wants to play football just like anybody else and uh, I think for that 90 minutes he is just like everybody else, he's supporting the team that he loves and he can cheer and celebrate and go crazy uh, for all those special moments um, but Alex also gets um, you know a lot of privileged access um, you know because um, but some of that is him just waiting around you know so it, it is something that everyone can do uh, but Alex has the determination to do that and he has a uh, you know, special relationship with quite a number of players. And it's just nice to see and I think that's, uh, that helps him, uh, you know, makes it special for him. Because he goes to so many games, he has become recognised, he's got his own YouTube channel, he's got um, you know, uh, uh, access on, uh, or presence on all social media now. The one matter, uh, first met him. Uh, away at Norwich, he came over after the end of the game and he's kept in touch ever since. He sent him a, a match shirt, uh, signed I'm match shirt sure. the, the day after. He didn't give him a shirt there and then. Yeah. Uh, players aren't actually allowed to do it, even though they do do it. I think they do get fined for it. Um, but that was nice and uh, Alex has stay, stayed in touch with Juan and uh, messaged him over Twitter and what have you. He's really nice relationship and he always recognises him and he always says hello and uh, comes over and makes that special moment to, um, you know, to meet and greet him. Uh, and it's just it's br brilliant to see, and these are the things that, um, that I can't buy. Th these are experiences that Alex has, uh, that, you know, it's, it's just unique and uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And I, I, I just, I absolutely buzz off that, I really do. I think a few players might have let on to him, uh, but I think one matter was definitely the, the first player to really create that connection. And there's been a few players since, um, you know, that, that do recognise Alex and will always make a point of saying hello or having a photo. Uh, and it's just a brilliant experience, like I say, it's money, money can't buy kind of experience for Alex. Just that initial connection, he was the first player, because Alex was always desperate to get a player's shirt. And, and even though we didn't get it at the time at Norwich away, uh, one did send a personally signed shirt in the post to him. And it was a, a, a you know, a player's player issue shirt. Uh, so that's something that Alex has always treasured. He also did a little handwritten uh, signed photo as well for him. So I think there's always going to be a special kind of um, bond between uh, himself and one matter. Uh, and he's such a genuine guy. He's, he's not doing it for the publicity. He's doing it because he genuinely cares and he, he's spending that time and reaching out to the supporters. You know, he realised his supporters, we had to get up at, I think, about four o'clock that day of the Norwich game. So he understands the, the, the amount of effort and work that supporters put in. It's just nice of players to actually give something back. Uh, and that's what uh, one done uh, in, a, in an abundance, really. Obviously, I'm a, his dad, so that, that's a really, uh, really heartfelt for me. But I, I, I think if it wasn't Alex's father, it would be nice to see, you know, uh, just especially, it's not because Alex has a disability. I think it's because he's genuinely spending that time. Uh, and I think that's what's nice. And, and everyone can, can I relate to that. We all, you know, I certainly wanted to be a player back in the day and, and, and this is probably the closest I'll ever get to it. And it feels like you have a relationship with, a, you know, a, a well-known uh, international footballer. It's lovely, it really is. I think to Alex, it's just, just natural it, it just happens and it's just just one of those it's like almost like an everyday occurrence now <laughs> to Alex it doesn't seem special even though it is it's absolutely massive you know to, to have that kind of uh, relationship with it with the player it's uh, like you say it's not it's not known that isn't uh, it isn't really known at all so it is it's wonderful to see it really is you know I think that is it is nice and he, he, he does he's really really kind of uh, a genuine down-to-earth guy uh, who just wants to help people. He realises he's in a privileged position uh, and he's trying to share that kind of, um, you know, um, 
you know, the wealth or experience with other people and just welcome them in. It's really nice to see. I think one is, is he's certainly in touch with it, with the, the fans, you know, he's, he's obviously become, uh, you know, put, put money into um, Oviedo. Um, you know, and he genuinely wants to help. Uh, he's obviously got a special um, place in, in the fans' hearts there, you know what I mean? Even though we never made the first team, he was integral in, into their youth system. So, you know, that, that kick-started his, his career, really. Uh, and I think he's always appreciated that. And I think it's nice that they've recognised that and the, and the fame and glory and money hasn't gone to his head. And he stayed grounded and he is privileged, but he's, he is trying to be just like you or me, you know, the average guy on the street, um, you know, and kind of uh, share his or, or, or give out experiences to other people. Uh, so it's really nice to feel, really nice to see. Alex has a number of specialists and uh, he has to do various stuff. He has to work in his speech and language, he has to work, um, you know, does physio twice a week. So there's a lot of things that Alex has to do that other kids don't don't have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So having football is a massive motivation for him. Um, so even just being able to see the game or you know have a you know a, a photo with a the player, the, these are massive encouragements and tools that you can use to kind of um, you know allow him to um, you know progress and do these things because it is hard work. Uh, I think Ian Zlatan uh, did a little video, a, a little motivational video for him. Uh, just to, as a reminder to work hard and keep doing it. Um, and, and these things are nice that he, he can look back on and he probably doesn't really understand the significance and the, the importance of it. But hopefully with these little gentle reminders, this will help Alex improve as an individual and he'll become much stronger for that experience. It's absolutely amazing. I think he's, um, he was still godsmacked. Uh, Matic uh, get handed his match shirt uh, on uh, Tuesday night. You were absolutely made up, weren't you? Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful experience. I don't think. What? No, no, it's the first time that's ever happened, hasn't it? The, the match shirt. So, uh, you know, it's something that we're keen, and uh, you're absolutely godsmacked by it, weren't you? <laughs> Wore it on the way home. He was so excited. In fact, if it wasn't soaking wet, he would have worn it for bed that night. <laughs> What's bet for you? A United win or an experience with a player? <laughs> Is that what you prefer? I Would you? Rather lose but get the match shirt. <laughs> Just nice that he's done, he's probably done miles more things that we're probably not even aware of. You know, there's the high profile things that we all know. And then there's little things that probably go go under the radar, but um, yeah, it's he's so, and he's a, he's an excellent player as well. It's not as if um, you know, not that that would matter, you know. But he he's he's, he's at the top of his game. He's, uh, he always seems to be a fan's favourite. I think he was at Chelsea and, and and what have you. So you know, a lot of supporters have respect for him, not only as a as a player but as an individual as well. and I'm an artist. I am a, I am a Manchester United fan and I've been supporting my United since I was born, I think. I was born in 1974. My father was a Man United fan, so naturally I became a Man United fan. Joining Manchester United players is what kind of started me off in being quite successful, basically. I started joining Wayne Rooney and then, and then when people saw my Wayne Rooney on Twitter, that's when it kind of, that's when everyone wanted a picture of, of themselves. Footballers wanted a picture of themselves as well. Edgar Davids was the first player to ask me, like, he saw my Wayne Rooney and he said, I want one too. So, so in terms of being a Man United supporter and joining Wayne Rooney, he, that was start, that's what started everything off really. I never put the world of football and illustration in, in the same place, you know. It was only about 15 years ago when I thought, okay, let's start drawing footballers. The, the fans um, do appreciate um, illustration. I mean, like, I sell all my my United pictures. I mean, like, like, like to all the United fans. I mean, I got my football tops that that sell at the Manchester United football shop. So yeah, so slowly my work is you know being appreciated by fans and, and everything. And now I get recognised by by fans as well. So you know they, they'll see me in the street and they'll 
they'll know I'm a Man United fan and they'll recognise me for, for my artwork, which is quite nice sometimes. When I started doing it, it you know, it was just it was just for fun and just for me really. But then being asked by Manchester United and, and working with Manchester United, it's been I couldn't ask for more really. You know what I mean? I don't think there's anything above that. Manchester United magazine asked me to work with them. I did a they wanted me to do a picture of Juan Mata. So I, I for the magazine I did a picture of Juan. They also asked me to design the the actual name for the like um, the logo as well for for this issue, which was very 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 nice of him as well. You know. So I also drew like other Manchester United players, but they wanted Juan on the front cover. I don't really care for, for, for meeting footballers, you know. I just I just like the game. So, so meeting anyone individually, it doesn't really bother me. But when I met Juan, he's he was such a nice guy that that kind of changed my attitude towards like meeting footballers. You know, he's very nice. He, he was he's very interested in art as well. So 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 we could have we could have a proper conversation where where I don't think you can have a normal conversation with y y your typical footballer. There's nothing to talk about really, apart from how much money they earn, or, or cars and girls, you know what I mean? But Kran, you know, he was, he was very good at, at kind of not talking about that kind of stuff and just mainly talking about art, really, you know, and our appreciation for art, basically. And Manchester, actually, he, he, he loves Manchester, so we, we talk about areas, areas around Manchester. In general, you know, we, we all look at footballers and they're not, and yeah, they, they do have their fancy lifestyle and, and like, you know, they have their expensive, expensive houses and you know they go out and and enjoy themselves maybe too much sometimes but with Juan he's he's like he feels like he's he's not your average footballer you know he he kind of he's, he's just he feels very normal he's like a normal person really and like um, I don't feel like he's um he, he he feels like he's very different from you know he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't, be, he doesn't act like a superstar you know what I mean? He acts like he wants to be part of society, basically. It's so strange because we have different expectations, you see. We expect footballers to, 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 to behave like superstars to a certain degree. We expect them to behave like superstars, but also we're angry that they behave like superstars, you know what I mean? And then, and then you got, like, Juan, he's just like a, he's a breath of fresh air. He's so different, and, and that's why we, we love him so much, because he is. He, I mean, he, he gives money to charity. He does all the good things that we want. We want like people who who are rich and famous to do. You see, you know, I mean? he doesn't act like he's rich. And, but the thing is, yeah, he doesn't act like he's rich and famous. He's just a nice, great person to be, you know, and and to hang around with. Basically, you know, he's just a normal bloke, as we would say. It may be D David De Gea because because he, I think he's. He's, he's just very quiet, you know what I mean? And because he's quiet, he doesn't he doesn't show off or anything. He just kind of gets on with the job. I mean, he may not be similar, but because we don't know too much about him, we don't see that much of, of him in the media. And I like the fact that he kind of stays in the background. He's, there's, there's not much social media. There's just kind of, there's not much news on him. He just kind of does what he does. And he's, and he's still at Manchester United. And I think the fact that he's, st he's stayed at Manchester United, a lot of people think he's, you know, a lot of people have this belief in him that he's a good guy. In the future, the way the, the way the money is, you know, I think there will be kind of there will be more celebrity and more superstars in football because the like they're, they're so exposed to the media, it's only natural that that, that that happens, you know. But ultimately, you know, we we still want to see players like Juan who are just like who who want to kind of lead a a good normal charitable lifestyle basically you know I, I, who knows you know you know I, ideally i like to see like you know less less footballers in in the newspapers and in the spotlight but it's not going to happen because that's what that's what sells newspapers you know people people want to read about the footballers and and at the same time the footballers will play up to it they'll act like like, like for the press basically you know and it and it just helps it's just that's part and parcel of, 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 of media. It's just kind of, everyone likes stories and everyone wants to read stories, good or bad, basically. My name's 
Tom Brandhorst. I work for Copper90 as the editorial director of the UK side. I think the perception of Juan Mata generally is that he is one of, if not the nicest guy in football. I think he embodies that both on the pitch and off the pitch. And in some ways, what he does off the pitch only serves to increase his image on the pitch. When you see him playing, for example, last week against Chelsea, which is, of course, a really important and passionate game for him against his old club. He's running around that pitch uh, with so much determination. And I think when you know what he does off the pitch, whether his common goal or other um, initiatives of his, when you know that, it makes you realise his character is about determination and his character is one which is far more about striving for something he believes in and really um, putting 110% of his effort into that. I think in theory, he's got potential to be a really good role model. I wonder whether there's quite a big gap if you look at Juan Mata, age 30 now, and some of the younger players playing age 21 or younger. Juan Mata doesn't look like them. He's not got tattoos. He's very sort of mature in how he comes across. And he's always felt mature, even when he was in his mid-20s. I wonder whether there's perhaps too much of a gap between him and young footballers and whether they might see him as a bit too far removed and a bit of an older generation which they don't relate to. That's not to say that they shouldn't take him as a role model. They definitely should be looking up to him. It's just I wonder whether there might be... It feels as though it's almost like your dad trying to tell you what to do, perhaps. Obviously, he can command great respect within a, within a team, and I've no doubt that he is a, a mature mentor for a lot of those players. But I wonder whether if you look at the, a 21-year-old now versus uh, even one matter when he was 21, it feels like the generations, the gap's getting bigger and bigger, and it might be harder for them to relate and, and learn. A similar player to Juan Mata, it's a good question. Um, I think, well, if you judge him on the work that he does outside of football, there are a few players, obviously, who, um, who have also tried to do initiatives. Uh, Matthew Flamini, so if you remember, he was doing um, his sort of environmental projects outside of football. I think that's probably a direct comparison for me. It's those people who start doing something um, NGO related outside of football who then make a name for themselves off the pitch. So I think Flamini in terms of in terms of like the news and in terms of that side of things, but in terms of like a character, in terms of players that have that sort of mature character like Juan Mata, um, I'm English so I mean I try and think of an English comparison. I think it's it's quite hard. There's not really obviously England have such a young team now as well. There's not that many 30 year olds knocking around I'm trying to think we, we haven't really got anyone that I'd say compares the one matter in their their role model status someone like David Beckham back in the day was definitely a role model with the way he composed himself with the way he he seemed like a, a respectable guy um, but he never necessarily embodied these attributes of uh, striving for a greater, for a better world that perhaps Juan Mata does, which is I think why Juan Mata is so much more unique than a lot of other players out there because he he does seem to care about things that other footballers maybe either don't care or care superficially about. If you look at what Juan Mata was like when he was 21, it's so far removed from what a lot of foot, not everyone, but a lot of footballers are like age 21 now. We've no idea how they're going to grow up. They might, if you look at, if you look outside of football at generations, there's a lot of younger people, and especially in England, if you look at younger generations of, of people, teenagers, they tend to be a lot more socially aware than older people. And there are role models for us that are age 30 above, and there's a lot of older people doing good in the world, of course, but people younger than me care a lot more about the environment. They care a lot more about um, doing charity work, about being more conscious of how we treat other people. And I think the funny discrepancy is that if you look at the football world, football is a, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily the same way around. And at the same time, I think the way that football is uh, um, developed these days in that one matter came through a different system to Victor Lindelof will have come through now at United. I don't know why I picked him as an example, but the point being that the system they come through now is a lot more, um, requires a lot more dedication and hard work. A lot of players grow up in a very sort of incubated environment in which they are pretty much football robots designed to simply kick a ball on a pitch and having a personality outside of that is optional but not, not encouraged. So we might see people who, I don't know, 
either that lack of personality means they don't care about other people or maybe their sort of more uh, focused upbringing means that they're a little bit more aware of um, or they've got a little bit more time to be aware of the world around them and or they're less I don't know they're less uh, they're not going out every night basically and getting pissed all the time if you look at Harry Kane and and the young England players of now versus the young England players of the 90s the England players now are incredibly hard-working determined I said the word robots which is unfair they're just very committed uh, and really training instead of going out and eating well not eating meat not drinking that sort of thing maybe that actual that that lifestyle will actually transform into a viewpoint where later down the line they they want to encourage the world to generally be a better place as independent media that's really close to the fans i think it's quite clear that all fans absolutely love one matter um, i think it's because of his character on the pitch i think it's his the way that he plays football and the way that he has a smile on his face a lot of the time and is very determined that is something that fans always get behind and i think he hasn't got any ego there's no um there's no sort of personality uh, no arrogance to his play I think fans really appreciate that and so whether he's playing for Chelsea or whether he's playing for United he's someone that you absolutely love having on your team and generally fans uh, you know think he's the nicest guy in the world I think English media do revere Juan Mata as a world-class player he's never the one that everyone's talking about he's just there silently pulling the strings, sometimes scoring an amazing goal or getting a great assist, ticking along. There's a lot of players like that in the Premier League, whether it's Sergio Aguero, maybe David Silva, who people will talk about from time to time but never truly appreciate just how much they're bringing to the table. So I hope that when he does retire and when in 20 years time we look back, we remember him properly as being someone who consistently, and consistency is hard as a Premier League footballer, someone who consistently was performing on the pitch, someone who oozed class and off the pitch really made an effort to, to do things the right way with the influence and the, the power and money that he has. That'd be sort of, I think, I'm not, you never really think about one matter, to be honest. You just, you just presume he's the nicest guy. You just presume he'll be there, whether it's for Chelsea or United. You don't want, if your team's playing against them, you'll be watching out because you know he's really good. Um, other than that, it's just like he's one of those sort of permanent fixtures in English football now, which we take for granted. And we know he's this amazing player who's also got a great personality outside of football. And when, when he eventually leaves the Premier League, I think we'll, we'll realise that, oh, that's a shame. We had, you know, there's not many other players like him and we probably should have appreciated him a bit more when he was playing. Gregory Lee classic football shirts, social media manager. I think he just um, connects with fans really well and um, he's obviously really interested in football as well um, and obviously he cares about where he lives and his, um, and his community um, and he's very active in Manchester obviously he's got a restaurant he, um, he's always seen around the city um, has a real interest in um, you know parts of the city. He followed us on social media, so we reached out to him and said, oh, would you like to do something with us? Um, and being one, he said, yeah, he'd like to, but he'd really like to come round and see all the retro shirts first. So, um, yeah, last year he came round and spent about six hours looking through <laughs> retro shirts. So, yeah, he's got a real passion for old shirts and you know really likes the vintage designs i just think it's just like any football fan you know we look back at world cup 1990 and world cup 94 like one his favorite shirt is the spain from 1994 world cup because that's the first shirt that he remembers his country playing in and i think it's this it's just the same as any other fan we look back at those shirts at iconic moments and I think he really gets it that like he's a football fan. He's not just, you know, he doesn't just play football. He is a football fan. When we first met Juan and we showed the passion for Common Goal, we really wanted to get involved. Um, so we contacted Common Goal th through Juan and asked if we could help out in any way. Um, and we'd, uh, we've auctioned off 
three shirts for Common Goal to raise money for the for all for the, all the charities that they support. I think that Wan will always be about, and I think he with his charity work, I think he will always be relevant, even when he's left football. He'll still be working within football in some in some way, um, and I think he'll always be about um, doing good. He's not very vocal in the media in terms of negativity, he's always very positive uh, and I think he connects well with the fans and I think that's why people respect him. I think he's got that connection which makes him real and people think, well, yeah, I'd li I like people like that on my club. Um, yeah, he doesn't, there's no negative comments when he leaves a club or when he signs, he never says anything about the manager. He, um, I mean, there's been a lot of press about his relationship with Mourinho going to Manchester United and he's never said anything negative about the relationship. He's always been very positive about his working relationship with Jose. Yeah, people still like him. We had a, we put out a post a couple of months ago um, and loads of Chelsea fans were saying, come back to Chelsea, you look better in blue. <laughs> so yeah, everyone respects him from his old clubs and they all would take him back. Yeah, I'd say he's in the top five players. You know, obviously you have De Gea, Pogba, and then I'd say he falls somewhere in the after those. Um, but yeah, they, they, everyone, like I said before, everyone likes Juan and everyone even from other clubs might be willing to, you know, purchase a, a one matter shirt rather than, you know, someone someone else that used to play for Man United. Well, he said at the we had a fabric football exhibition and he said his favourite shirt was the Spain 94 home. So um, maybe he would take one of those or maybe a Real Oviedo, his first team um, growing up. That's who he supported. So maybe he's hero from that team. Yes everybody, what's going on? My name's Stephen Alson, this is Full Time Devils and this is a full time review, a chance for you guys to have your say on all the action that went down this weekend. Now coming up for you today, as usual... My name's Chris, I'm the channel producer for Full Time Devils. As a fan, viewing footballers sometimes, they can seem very distant, very aloof. They live a very different lifestyle to us. The world that they live in is very controlled and managed for them. That's something that we as fans can never never imagined but I think Juan is different because he is we can tell as fans that he's invested himself in the city he cares about Manchester as a place he, t he takes the time to to understand our culture our customs which can be a bit strange <laughs> sometimes and I think that's that's really made a connection with the fans obviously in practical terms things like his weekly blog like the fact that he's willing to share his thoughts with us as fans, that there's a conversation between him and the fans that you don't get with every player. And I think that's what connects him to us as a fan base, perhaps more than the other players. I think his playing style is perhaps different to a, a lot of the players that we've had in the past there. The level of technique that he has, his technical ability, is perhaps higher than... It's it's hard to think of another player who has that. I mean, the, to be honest, the only players that come to mind are from other clubs. In terms of his off-the-field activities, uh, obviously there's, he's got amazing role models in terms of United legends, like someone like Eric Cantona was very much the same in the way that he invested himself in the city. He was very much a part of the city, part of our culture. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily compare them in playing styles. To me, when I think of Mata, I think of players like Zola, a classic classic number 10 who could, who could link midfield and forwards with that kind of instinctive pass. He always seems to be thinking ahead of the game, ahead of the rest of the players on the, on the pitch. I think that's his kind of gift. As 
football grows as an industry, that there are people like Juan Mata who are still trying to connect to to the fans, to to the more traditional side of the game, perhaps in a in a world that's changing every day. It'd be quite easy to leave leave all that behind. But I think it, it's important for us as a team to have have a player like him who is happy to communicate with fans. Um, it makes us feel more connected to the club as fans when, when players are willing to take the time to, to speak to us, to get involved in, in the culture of the, of the club, that it feels like we're kind of maintaining some of the roots of what, what got the club into this place in the, in, the, in the first place. I wonder if Juan in the dressing room is anything like the public persona that we see of him. Because I'd imagine he's a, a fantastic, calming influence to have around. Like, if the team's going through any problems, like I'd kind of love to look around and see Juan sat there with his reassuring uh, grin to um, to talk through, to articulate what the team's going through and how they could move on from there. Because he he seems to be a fantastic communicator, and I think that's a really important skill for a for a footballer to have and a really useful trait for us to have in the team that he could perhaps unite different parts of the team that, and around him. Like, I think he potentially has quite a good captain quality to him in, in that sense that I could imagine him maybe captaining the side at some point. Perhaps in, in England maybe, the, like if you look at a player like Wayne Rooney who was often on the front page for reasons outside of football not for positive reasons. Like I'm not expecting to pick up a paper anytime soon and see that Juan's got caught drink driving or something something else bad like like that. Like it, it's the I think the press in the UK is they're they're out for a negative angle, and he uh, obviously it doesn't seem like he's going to give him that kind of story to talk about. A lot of the time, obviously football is about the the achievements that the, the players um, manage on the pitch. Um, but I think through things like Common Goal, um, Juan's perhaps creating a story around him that's more about what he's doing off the pitch than any anything negative like that. In England, um, there's been a bit of a disconnect between the mass media and, and football fans. Um, so as time has gone on, new technology has come in, social media has come in and kind of taken the place that perhaps newspapers had in the past. Um, so it, we're much more likely as football fans now to, to communicate with someone like Juan, to, to find out news about someone like Juan um, through social media rather than through consuming that kind of content through mass media. Um, so that, that could be through things like full-time doubles <laughs> so um, we obviously try and bring fans and football closer together the club um, but there's a lot of organizations out there doing that like every every time a new player signs up for common goal like I, I read about it on websites I hear about it through Twitter um, so that's not necessarily something that fits the mass media agenda because it's a positive positive story Full-time Devils were invited to film with Juan Mata. Uh, he was establishing a YouTube channel for himself. Uh, one of the great things about YouTube is that um, there's so much collaboration between channels. We, we don't have competitors. Uh, it's only people that we can work with to, to grow our audience. So when, when a, a current Manchester United player says to us that they want to work with us, like that's, that's unbelievable. So we, um, we had um, an interview arranged with Juan. Uh, so we, we went down to meet him. Um, he ha had so much time for us. Um, we were with two of the presenters from our channel, uh, Adam McCola and Sam Homewood, who are both obviously very excited about, about meeting Juan as well. Um, so we, we went to, to meet him, he had a lot of time for us, for the guys, as much as you kind of can have within a busy um, media kind of setup, up. Um, and he, he was really 
friendly. He we took a load of questions from fans, and he was he was happy to to answer all the questions. Um, it was it was really interesting to speak to him about things like his future aspirations. So. Um, so he, he was talking about how he'd he'd like to work in marketing himself or if he wasn't a footballer maybe he would have worked in marketing which I think is quite interesting because you can see that with how he manages his social media accounts, his, his kind of persona in, in public as, as well. Um, so we um, we filmed a short interview with him and then we were kind of surprised because he'd also brought Ander Herrera in. Uh, so it was uh, kind of fantastic to see uh, those those two guys together. Um, obviously, they're good friends off off the pitch as as well as um, playing together on it. Um, the guys actually played a um, a, a game with uh, Juan and uh, Ander against uh, Sam and Adam from from our channel. Um, so that that was uh, that was fantastic uh, to be able to. Be involved in making a video with someone that we're seeing on the pitch um, week in week out. Um, for them to take the time to want to work with us was uh, was fantastic. Off camera, uh, Juan had a lot of time with us. There's there's a saying that you shouldn't meet your heroes, but if your heroes Juan matter, I definitely recommend meeting him. He uh, he didn't didn't disappoint in in that sense. Like a lot of the time, we we've been lucky over the years that we've been able to film with uh, a few different footballers and uh, these kind of events the the time's very tightly controlled you have to kind of rush in and rush out um, and it's not always a kind of relaxed friendly situation but with Juan he, he made sure that everyone felt at home and that we were all welcomed there to to be with him so in in the short time we had he was um he was fantastic to us and it was great memories from myself sam and adam uh to to work with him that day former fun next yeah it's gonna get three points no, it's, it's gonna be an early start for that one isn't it pal but uh, yeah yeah we're hoping to come back with another three and then uh you know take it from there isn't it so we can do excellent <laughs> Um, I don't want to think about it to be honest. That's pain <laughs> painful. Uh, obviously, it'll happen at some point. We've kind of the last few summers, we've kind of had a, a back of our minds like, oh, maybe this is the year when he's going to move. But um, it's it's not happened so far, thankfully. But when he does, I think he'll he'll be really respected um, for being one of the kind of foundations of the club in a really turbulent time post Ferguson. Um, he came in uh, the January after Alex Ferguson had gone. And so he's, he's been a bit of a rock for us through that time. He's been in and out of the team, which has been uh, difficult to understand at some points. Like obviously as a, any player's forms, gone up and down but I think he's he's been a real constant for us um, he's provided goals he's been creative he's provided assists you only need to look at his stats to to tell you that but he's added so much more like he's I think the biggest compliment I could give him is that he really is a Manchester United player like he sums up everything I think the club the club stands for um, as a positive uh, community organisation. I think when he does eventually leave he'll be given a really good send off by fans because he has stuck with us and given us so much positivity through a difficult time for the club. I imagine one matter retiring somewhere in Spain uh, playing for a Spanish club and it being a big sad day and I imagine United and Chelsea fans holding hands and saying how great it was that they uh, had this player at their club. I think it would be a real, uh, there'd be like a real testament to someone who was a real, was a respectable player on the pitch and was a player who uh, decided to do things differently. And I think when, when he retires, I think it would be that tiny bit more special than when other legendary Spanish midfielders retire. When David Silva or Xabi Alonso or people like that retire, I think one matter 
his last game will be that even more special because he's brought so much more to the game than just playing football on a pitch. If he, if if Wank left, yeah, I, I'll still love him because because of the impression he's made on, on me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to judge him if if he leaves. You know what I mean? I'm not going to feel bad unless he leaves for Man City, basically. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> or Liverpool. You know, any any other team, we'll be fine because you I mean I mean like what he's done like like for Manchester United is great. You know what I mean he. He tries every game and everyone can see how, you know, that he, he's a force for good. You know what I mean? If he leaves Man United, it's, I, know he doesn't want to, I know he doesn't want to leave Man United. It'll be because he'll be sold and it's not, and it's not his fault. You know what I mean? But yeah, he, he'll, still be, he'll still be loved. And for me, I, I wish he would, he would never leave. You know what I mean? I wish he retires at Man United. That's, that's my personal hope for him anyway. Oh, if you left, you mean? Oh, my days. I don't know what would happen. Would you be upset if one left? I know uh, you were getting a bit nervous last year until he signed that one-year extension. So, I don't know. I don't know how you'd feel about that. It would be a big loss. Go on. So you support that team that one would go to? Yeah. yeah? That's nice. <laughs> because he's so genuine, I think that's all I can put it down to. He's not doing it for the publicity, he's not doing it for financial gain. He's doing it because he, he's doing it for the fans. And that, at the end of the day, is, is what matters in football. And the, the fans, you know, support their clubs, uh, both financially and up and down the countries and, and, and what have you. And I think that gets forgotten sometimes. Uh, and I think it's nice that, uh, you know, he's, he's kind of relating to him. He's, he's, he's just one of us at the end of the day, isn't he? Yeah, I feel that. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's it. It's you, one, one, one. It's you, one, one. <laughs> Put it there, pal. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> one. You got a pen, Hey, right hand in some bits, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah fantastic. Are you right doing that one? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. My hometown. Oh. Very good. <laughs> doing that one as well. Yeah. Superb, and just last one as well. So we did that. We did that. With, oh, very cold. Very cold. We did that in the black one if that's okay. Black one. Yeah, 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 no, let's go. Bye. Uh, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.